This book is called Flika, Rika, and Dika, and the Little Dog. It was written by Mai Lindman. And if your name is Christine, Anna, and Mitchell, and you're from Michigan, or you are triplets from Michigan or from anywhere else in the world, this would be a fun book for you. It's about three girls who are triplets in Sweden. There's a list here of some other books written by the same author. She has two big series, the Flika, Rika, and Dika series and the Snip, Snap, and Snur series. From Sweden, that's the Swedish flag right above the photograph of the author. And it is uh, an adventure tale about three girls and a dog with whom they fall in love. Flika, Rika, Dika, and the Little Dog by Mai Lindman. Flika, Rika, and Dika have blue eyes and curly golden hair. They always wear dresses that are just alike. In faraway Sweden, there is a pretty yellow house with green shutters and green doors. This is where the three girls live. One very rainy day, Flika, Rika, and Dika were playing with their dolls. A doll tea party had ended when Flika said, Listen, do you hear that noise? Rika said, I hear only the rain pounding against the door. Dika ran to the window and looked out. There on the step, in a puddle of water, sat a little white dog with one brown ear and one white ear. The little dog was howling. <coughs> as if to say, I am wet, I am cold, won't somebody let me in? The three little girls hurried to the door and opened it. Oh, you poor little dog, said Flika. You must be very wet and cold, said Rika. She patted him gently. You are probably hungry, too, said Dika. Come in. The little dog stood up and walked slowly into the house, leaving muddy paw marks on the floor. Who are you talking to on this rainy afternoon? asked Mother as she came into the room. Then she saw the open door and the three girls watching the little dog. The dog shook himself. Drops of water flew in every direction. He, he, he needs a good hot bath, said Flika. He, he's dirty and, and cold. I'll get the green wash tub, said Rika, and, and the soap and the brush. I'll get the watering can, said Dika. It will work like a shower. I'll get a big bath towel to wipe him dry after he is clean, said Flika. Soon the little white and brown dog stood in the tub of soapy warm water. Rika scrubbed him gently with the brush, clear to the tip of his white tail. Dika stood on the blue chair and poured down a gentle shower of warm water from the green watering can. Flika held the big towel. The little dog seemed to understand that they were all good friends. I do believe you are as, as clean as, as soap and water can make you, said Rika. She helped him out of the tub. Flika rubbed him and rubbed him until he was almost dry. Then she sat down in the big yellow rocking chair with the little white and brown dog on her lap. Rika found a clean wooden box, which she partly filled with straw. Over this she laid a cloth that Mother gave her. This will make a soft bed, she said to Flika. Dika brought a bowl of warm milk. When the little dog had lapped up all he could, he went to sleep in his bed. I'm sure you have done all you can for this dog, said Mother. He is clean and warm. He has taken most of the milk. He will sleep till morning. At bedtime, the three girls talked about the little white and brown dog. 
They even went to see if he was sleeping soundly in his warm box. The next morning, Flika said, Mother, couldn't we keep the dog? We like him very much. I like him too, said Mother. But don't you think such a dog must belong to somebody? Perhaps he is lost. We must look in the morning paper, and if the owner advertises, we must return the dog to him. Flika and Mother read the paper. Dika sat on the floor with her arms around the little dog. Rika cried softly. Then Mother read, Lost, a little white dog with one brown ear and one white ear. Answers to the name of Mike. Reward, Tom Carlson. Not many dogs have one brown ear and one white ear said Mother. Mike, called Flika. The little dog walked over to her. Mike must be his name, said Mother. I am sure we have Mr. Carlson's dog. Go and put on your yellow coats and red caps. Then you must take Mike home. Mr. Carlson owns that big orchard west of town. Flika, Rika, Dika, and Mike started down the street toward Mr. Carlson's orchard. Perhaps Mike was sorry to leave the pretty yellow house. Perhaps he liked to play with the three little girls. As they walked along, Mike sat down with almost every step he took. Though they pulled and called, Mike did not want to go with them. So the three little girls took turns carrying him. I really believe he wants to live with us, said Flika. I think he must get lonesome in that big orchard. Flika, Rika, Dika, and Mike finally reached the orchard, where Mr. Carlson was busy raking. Yes, that's my dog, he said crossly. He's the watchdog from my orchard. There's his house. You can see his collar and chain fastened to it. Just put his collar on and leave him. Flika very gently put the collar on Mike and patted him goodbye. Tears rolled down her cheeks. The little girls sadly walked home. I am sure Mike will be lonely tonight all by himself in that big apple orchard, said Flika thoughtfully. I hope he remembers how happy he was at our house, said Rika. But it was Dika who told Mother all about Mr. Carlson's needing a watchdog. Mike is so small for that, she added. Mother agreed with Dika. The girls said little at dinner. Each one was thinking of Mike. They said little to each other as they went to bed. Only Flika said, Oh, dear, I do hope Mike isn't cold. Early the next morning, soon after sunrise, the girls heard a dog bark. When they opened their window, <laughs> there was Mike, joyfully wagging his tail and barking. <laughs> Good morning. How happy the children and Mike were to see each other. Of course, they fed Mike. Then Mother said thoughtfully, You know, we really cannot keep what does not belong to us. I am going to take Mike back myself. Do you wish to come with me? But, Mother, he won't walk home, said Flika. He wants to live with us. We could hardly get him to leave our house yesterday. Then I shall carry him, said Mother quietly. Mike is not our dog. Then they all started toward the orchard. Mother carried Mike, and the three little girls went sadly along. Flika walked close beside Mike, holding his front left paw. Rika patted Mike. Dika cried a little. The girls and mother talked as they walked along. I know how you feel, said mother softly. I'd like to keep him too. Soon they came to the orchard. Mr. Carlson stood near a ladder holding two baskets full of apples. Close by was the doghouse. Next to the doghouse was a large black and white dog watching them. 
Mr. Carlson looked at Mother. He, "'Here's your dog, Mr. Carlson,' began Mother. "'He came to our house again.' Before Mother could say more, Mr. Carlson said crossly, "'I have another dog. I bought him yesterday. It was a big orchard, and I think I should have a big watchdog.' "'What about Mike?' asked Dika. "'Won't he have a home any more?' "'Well,' said Mr. Carlson, with this new dog, I don't need Mike now. I, I guess he's too little. Maybe, he went on, maybe he should have three little girls to play with. Mother set Mike down carefully. Do you mean, she began, Mr. Carlson, may we, said Fleeka, have Mike for our very own, ended Rika breathlessly. If your mother is willing, he said. Besides, <laughs> twice he's found the home that suits him, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Oh, thank you, thank you, cried the three little girls as Fleeka jumped up to kiss him. Mike seemed to be dancing with joy. Even Mr. Carlson looked happy now. Seems as though children and a little dog always have good times together, he said. I want to thank you, too, said Mother, for giving Mike to the three girls. They love him dearly already. The three little girls hugged their new pet. Mike was as pleased as he could be. He licked their faces as if to say, I belong to you now, and I shall live at your house. Won't we have fun playing together? Then Flika, Rika, Dika, and Mike ran off through the orchard toward home. Mother smiled and followed slowly along. The End my Lindman was an illustrator and an author from Sweden who also studied art in Paris. And this is one of her books, Flika, Rika, and Dika, and the Little Dog. <laughs>